Hello. Good to see you. Pastor Sam with a reflection for April 2nd. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help but laugh. Um, this is about as uh, culturally... What's the word? Boy, I should have thought about this beforehand. Terrible introduction. Um, aware. That's the word. This is about as culturally aware as I will ever be. I am woke. I woke up this morning, <laughs> sorry, at 6, 12 a.m. <clears throat> now, I'm going to try to be a little bit lighthearted about a topic that, that, that is serious. And the reason that I'm going to be lighthearted is that uh, this topic has a very good place for it to be resolved. Unfortunately, um, some folks are wanting extra people to be involved in the resolution of this topic, and that would be the idea of justice, the goal of justice, the virtue of justice. There is a, an excellent place for justice to be had, um, and then there are the people who are woke. Ooh, there we go. I Okay, anyway, um, I woke up at 6.12, this morning. I'm recording this on Wednesday, so I have no idea. I may still actually be asleep when you're watching this. Isn't that a cool idea? Anyway, um, what am I waking up from? And more specifically, since you can probably infer what I have woken up from, that would be my good night's sleep. What are other people, specifically what are other pastors, uh, waking from? Well, from figurative sleep. Now the idea of being woke and um, so the what what kind of spurred this on is there's an excellent <clears throat> paper. I know, I know a lot of you are jumping at that. Excellent paper published by our Minnesota South District President. That's kind of the, the um, overseer of, of the um, LCMS churches in the southern half of Minnesota. Kind of self-explanatory. I don't know why I explained it. Anyway, he wrote, I've got my nice little sheet here, an excellent paper called Critical Race Theory and the Gospel. And he's really examining the, not just the cultural movement of today, this idea of um, the whole Black Lives Matter organization. There, I have to be very careful. Black Lives Matter organization, um, the idea of being woke, and, and tracing its roots backwards really to the Civil War, and even before the Civil War. I think he provides uh, a little bit of a, 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 a drop of lightheartedness, right? I mean, he takes this topic very seriously, much more seriously than I already have. Uh, so I don't want you to think he's joking around with it by any means. Um, but, but a little bit of kind of tongue-in-cheek commentary, especially about folks whose actions don't seem to align with what they've said they've wanted to do. Maybe that's the way to say it. Anyway, link to that paper down below. I strongly encourage you to read it, especially if you are just <laughs> waking up, <laughs> becoming woke, um, or or if you're interested in the idea of justice in in kind of just understanding what what uh racism and the black lives matter organization now notice i've been very careful the black lives matter organization and and all this kind of turmoil is about he provides a nice background and history about how we got to where we are now and then also looking forward and especially the church's reaction to that most specifically, the care of souls. So I'm going to kind of um, uh, just not, not really comment on his paper. I think you should read it as it is, but to give uh, a perspective, mostly about how the church interacts with uh, racism. And, and um, I guess that's it. There we go. Longest introduction I've ever done, I guess. And, and we're halfway through my note card. So maybe the introduction was exceedingly short. Anyway, the need for justice. Justice is, is it one of the four virtues? I should have definitely looked that up. I think it is one of the four cardinal virtues. Now those would be um, 
Who said that? I feel like that was probably Thomas Aquinas who said that. Anyway, there's four virtues. Justice is one of them. They're cardinal virtues because even the heathens need justice. And even the heathens can show justice, which would be the unbelievers, right? The unbelievers can be just to one another. Jesus says this, the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light, right? The, 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 the world needs justice. Now, tragically, uh, there are some who see injustice in the world. And one of the what I really loved about the paper is that it put words to things that I was feeling and thinking, but didn't really have the the language to say and to articulate. Things that I had been sort of knocking around in 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 between the cobwebs up in my brain. I'm like, yeah, that's how I feel. That's exactly how I feel. He was able to, at least for me, I'm not saying he will for you. Um, at least for me, to peg exactly how I perceive this whole thing. And so I, I do strongly encourage you to read his paper. He He's a theologian, so it's it don't don't read this one right after you wake up. Don't become woke and then read this, right? Read this so that you don't have to be woke. Anyway. Justice is a virtue. And one of the points that he makes in the paper is the difference between, um, I'm going to call it actual justice and this idea of cosmic justice. Now, the reason I've called it actual justice is that justice, the virtue justice, is about having an impartial process, is about being not a respecter of any physiological ideological, methodological, epistemological, I think I used that last one wrongly, features about the person. If you do a thing, or if a thing happens to you, it doesn't matter one lick anything about you. You should have an identical outcome to if that same thing happens to another person. That That is justice. That is Justice. Justice is impartiality. He gives an example. Um, he gives an example where, where uh, what others perceive to be justice kind of goes off the rails. And this was kind of startling to me. All right. Imagine that you are on a boat. The boat has been hit by some, the boat has hit something and it is sinking. There are 300 people on the boat and there are 200 life jackets. What is the most just way to decide who gets a life jacket? I'm going to strategically take a drink, causing you to think about this. How would you justly decide who gets a life jacket? 300 people, 200 life jackets, some people are going to die. Sorry, friend. It's the reality of life. Okay, here's, <clears throat> here's what was so enlightening to me. If equality is the goal, no one makes it. That's the only just thing to do. Then everyone has the same outcome. If there are 300 people and 200 life jackets, you can't save everyone. So if you want everyone to be treated with equality, I'm using that word very specifically, with equality, everyone must die. That's the only way to ensure an equal outcome for every person. Now, like, like I did, you're probably like, that's idiotic. And yes, that's absolutely idiotic. There's a much better solution. Let 200 people live. Don't needlessly kill those 200 people for some perceived idea of equality. Oh, lots of air quotes. I get to be super snarky today, right? <clears throat> if equality is the goal, and if it is administered in a heavy-handed, ham-fisted way, everyone needs to die. That's it, friend. Now, you and I... I hope that I would, 
uh, allow someone else, mostly my wife and children, to have those life jackets, and I would die for uh, with the knowledge that they are able to live. Right? We have this um, this sort of innate virtue of justice inside of us that says, well, some people should live, and to be quite frank with you, it should be the women and children. That's how I was raised. You can disagree with me. You can absolutely disagree with me on that. I will never take a boat ride with you if you disagree with me on that, right? You can disagree all you want, but I'm not climbing in a boat with you whatsoever, right, friend? We, we, and we can still be friends. I just won't go near the water with you. Um, and so the actual justice is this idea of impartiality. It's administered uh, to, to specific noses and belly buttons, right? I, if a thing happens to me, I, I expect a process, an impartial group of people process to give me the same result as any other person who has the same thing happen. Now he contrasts that with what he calls cosmic, and, and it's not the author of the paper. Um, he's actually quoting a black, because I think that's important in this issue. Um, economist? I think he's an economist. Uh, anyway, it's in the paper. Go read that. Who talks, who talks about this idea of cosmic justice, and that cosmic justice is kind of an abstraction of, um, of how to even say it? Cosmic justice is making things right using an abstraction over time, right? Events in the past, we all know what those events are, must be atoned for, made up for, repaid, um, made right to me. Not, not, just, not just in an ethereal way, but to me. I have been, um, this is the idea of cosmic justice, I have been adversely impacted by some event in the past which I did not personally experience. Uh, again, this, this is that abstraction over generations and centuries. But I need justice to occur. And he really helps to flesh out Again, this is not the author of the paper, this is that black economist um, saying this, that we need justice, the virtue of justice and cosmic justice. Uh, don't worry about that, friend. That's not gonna happen. Anyway, so rambling a little bit, but I think I'm, I'm making headway. Now, the source of justice, God, God has established a thing to give justice. That would be the government, not the church, the government. The government is the Romans 13 language. The government um, promotes peace and order and subdues evil. The government establishes justice, makes sure that people uh, aren't jerks to each other to just cut the Bible verses, not cut them, go off, off Bible. Make sure that we're not jerks. And when somebody does something stupid to another person, they are uh, repaid according to their stupidity, right? That's the that's that's the that's the that's the government's job in every sense of that phrase. That's the government's one and only job: do justice, be be justiceful, make it so people can live with one another and not all go to hell. Do justice. That's the government's job. That's not the church's job. <clears throat> the church has a different job, and and also and and an equally important job, which is to tell people about Jesus. That's it. See see how easy the world is. The government does justice, and the church does Jesus. That's it. That's the whole world. I have described the entire world for you in one sentence. The government makes justice. The church makes Jesus tells people about Jesus. That's, that's where um, the wokeness and, and the lightheartedness, which I have surrounding that, comes from. That it's not the church's, it's not my job to establish a just process. If I were the president, if I were the governor, if I were a city councilor, that would be my job to establish a just process process to make sure that people have just outcomes when 
things happen to them or when they do things. That's the government's job. It's not my job whatsoever. My job is telling you about Jesus. That's it. Telling you about Jesus. One and only job that I have. That said, <clears throat> it gets a little bit trickier. Strategic drink. <clears throat> it, I, I will acknowledge and assent that it does get a little trickier when there are actual noses and belly buttons um, talking about. And that's where the second half of the paper comes in so well, the care of souls. Because justice doesn't occur, or injustice doesn't occur in some kind of vacuous cosmic sense. Uh, justice or injustice happens to a nose and a belly button. And so there's always a person affected by it. <clears throat> and that's where things get a little bit, um, that's where wisdom comes in. Let me just say that. So somebody comes in, wants to talk to me, this thing has happened to them. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry that happened to you, friend. Um, kind of depending on what happened, right? If, if somebody, if some illegal activity occurred against them, I'm going to be like, that stinks, go tell the police, right? That's, that's, that's the government's job, friend, to make sure that you have <clears throat> justice. That's, I, I'm sorry that thing happened to you. I'll pray for you. Um, I'll, I'll help you out, you know, uh, it, in some way if you need gas or like that kind of, but I, I, I can't give you justice. That's what the government needs to do. Now, again, depending on, and this is what, I can't give like one golden rule that's going to cover every single circumstance. If somebody comes in and they're like, hey, I've done this really bad thing, then I'll say, are you sorry for that bad thing? And hopefully they'll say yes. And then I can say, well, you're forgiven, friend. God forgives you for that bad thing. In, in Jesus' name, I forgive you for that bad thing you've done. I think you should go make that thing right. I think you should tell the person that thing you did, find some way to uh, help restore what, what has been wronged or taken or, again, whatever is going on. But that's, um, right, my job is, I, I am in the business of Jesus and forgiveness. That, that's all I got. That's it. So I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll wake up tomorrow probably about 6.30. So I'm, I'm only woke about half the time. Um, I only have Jesus and I only have forgiveness. The government only has justice. And the two are very, very important to our world. A world without forgiveness is a world going to hell. A world without justice is a world going to hell in a different sense, but still going to hell. Right? Both of them are very, very important. <clears throat> what, is un what is unimportant? No, I won't say that. Waking up, wake, waking up is important. If you slept the whole day, you would be unable to hear that you have forgiveness. You would be unable to, to help a friend, um, to direct them if they should need some counsel or whatever. W waking up is important. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Again, read the paper, excellent. I, I skimmed through sections. Some sections um, got, got a little deep for me, so I kind of, so um, read it, especially read the parts that you find interesting. But I do recommend it to you. It's, it's, again, our job in the church to be forgiving and to be taking care of the people, to, to assure them of God's love and God's forgiveness and of God's promises. And it's the job of our government to do justice. Thanks for joining me. God's peace, and I'll see you next time.